Mr. A.S. Murthy, Sri A.S. Murthy Garu, I must say, I know him outside PMI PCC too, and let me tell you, it has been my privilege to have been associated with him. The first day I went to his office, okay, I just thought, okay, I'm meeting with a gentleman who is a CTO. <laughs> so let me be very, very formal. <laughs> let me be, be, be very, very professional. I mentally prepared myself saying that I'm going to act a particular way. So I went with all this aura of being a professional, walking in with all the things. And he comes out and he just comes across and says, hello, how are you? And there I was, I was going saying that, how do I introduce myself? I practiced a little bit saying that I'm talking to a CTO of an organization, let me warm myself up. I had to immediately rev myself down. I found in my lifetime that was the most difficult part because I had rehearsed so much. I had to change and undo all that that I had programmed my mind. That's Mr. A.S. Murthy for you. A wonderfully capable gentleman and a great achiever, but yet so grounded. May I request Mr. A.S. Murthy onto the stage, please? He is what that doesn't say there, ladies and gentlemen. He is an electrical engineer from National Institute of Technology, Warangal, what used to be called REC Warangal, and he is recognized for his culture of overachievement and the philosophy of ordinary people will do extraordinary things. That's what Sri A.S. Murtigaru is for you. Very welcome on Thank you, sir. over here, sir, and we look forward to your Thank presentation. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. Thank you very much. Am I audible? In the last row? Yeah. I was told that uh, this, there is a very divergent audience here today. Uh, how many of uh, the people here are non-IT background here? May I just know? OK, so almost 40, 45, 50% of the people are non-IT. So I will try to make uh, my comments somewhat generic, and I was also requested just before I came here to give examples specific to IT because um, from the morning, most of the speakers are uh, talking about non-IT examples. I'll also see throughout my career, close to about 34 years, I have been in um, IT, and I just changed my job once from TCS to Satyam. Satyam is today is called uh, Tech Mahindra after the acquisition. So I had the, just that one transition after about 13 years in the, my first job. And today, I would like to share with you some of the intricacies or some of the challenges that are being faced by the project management fraternity uh, at large. What kind of challenges are there and where we need to come up and then help the organization. In a way, it is a very challenging time for all the project managers in the IT community. In fact, to the extent that it gives a scary feeling what is likely to happen a few quarters from now, maybe a few years down the line, all the way from would I be able to retain my job, would I be able to contribute significantly to the fortunes of the company, and what kind of reorientation that I need to go through. These are some of the things that are uh, plaguing the community of the project managers as we speak today. Why I'm saying that is, if you look at um, the top IT companies, the kind of growth that we have seen in the last uh, um, one and one and a half uh, decades has been phenomenal. Just as an example, when I joined TCS way back in 1981, the total strength of TCS was uh, less than 300 people. And when I joined Satyam in 1994, strength of Satyam was 40 people. So those are the kinds of numbers not too long ago. And there was not even a single 
billion dollar revenue IT company in India when the year 2000 happened. In fact, TCS became the first billion dollar revenue annual only in about 2002 time frame. And we know at this point of time the kind of a growth TCS today has more than 330,000 people. And there are at least five companies over 100,000 people which are based in India. So that is a kind of an explosive growth that has happened in our country. Thanks to Y2K, most of you here must have definitely participated and heard about the stories, especially between the years 1996 to 1999, there was really explosion in terms of the number of people required for the industry and the amount of training that is needed and the amount of rotation that has been happening, the amount of attrition that is happening in the IT industry, the kind of attrition figures that we normally attribute to a BPO industry, IT industry was facing at that point of time. There was absolutely no depth of talent when it comes to people at the engage, people fresh from the colleges. Any hundreds and thousands of people are available for to keep track of every half a dozen or 10 people, you need a leader. Where are the project leaders? Where are the project managers? So suddenly in a period of three, three years or so, hundreds and thousands of people have joined the IT companies at the entry level, and the people with one year experience are running away to the US and various other countries, where the years of experience, if somebody has today, when somebody says you have five, six years of experience, you are experienced and you can get overseas, or at least three, four years of experience. In those years, even the experience of six, seven months was considered very big, and people are getting offers. In that kind of a situation, projects were done in, in our country. With that kind of an attrition all, all, hovering around 50 to 60 percent uh, year on year, project managers were saddled. So it has become almost like man management. Project leaders were managing 10 people all the way to 50 people, and project managers are managing multiple projects. And at, the, at any point of time, they are seeing 100 to 300 people. And in a rush of blood, more and more of the youngsters to be managed by the experienced project managers. And what happened to that effect was many of the project managers became uh, man managers. Many of the people have become spreadsheet managers. Many of the senior people have lost touch with technology. That, that statement I'm able to make today, because when we talk to almost 30, 40% of the uh, 3,000 or 4,000 project managers um, in our company, we see many of those people are not in a position to quickly adapt to the latest technologies. The moment somebody talks about a cloud platform or a mobility or a security or kind of business, big data, business analytics, they are looking for people from those competencies to come and talk even for a five minutes, 10 minutes kind of a overview. If this kind of a trend continues, if the technical project managers become only spreadsheet managers or man managers or resource managers, organizations would have a very, very big challenging task to retain such people. So my one of the requests to all of you is that don't lose your touch. It is never too late. Every few years we make statements saying that technology is changing. In fact, many times we heard that every five years technology is changing. But today we have to unfortunately say every four or five quarters technology is changing. As a CTO of my company, if um, anybody asks me saying that two years down the line, what kind of technologies are expected to earn revenues for uh, my company, my, my answer is I'm not very sure. Maybe 50% of the revenues of our company, two years down the line, may come from technologies which have not yet born as of today. That is a kind of a scare that is actually happening. Because many of those new technologies are coming up by the month, and very quickly, people need to get adopted. And that adoption is not at the entry level, not just limited to the team member level. Team members level have no choice anyway. Even to some extent, project leaders would be close. But the project management community, if they have to retain their jobs, if they have to be seen in the eyes of the management with a lot of respect, there is absolutely no way other than getting reskilled irrespective of whatever is the age. Because of the Y2K, number of colleges have started in our country. Specifically in Andhra Pradesh itself, there are more than about 500, 600 engineering colleges. Just in Hyderabad, in the, in, in the whole Hyderabad and surroundings, there are more than 100 colleges. And each college has been producing hundreds and thousands of people, actually. 
So at the India level, we are talking about 500,000 uh, IT professionals getting produced, 500,000 software engineers, IT engineers, MCS produced, but then the kind of a jobs, the kind of a requirements that we are looking from them, the kind of a skills that we are actually expecting from them, there is a lot of gap. In fact, not even 15% of the 500,000 people are able to get into good companies. So there is a lot to be done, and that's where even PMI will be in a position to contribute to at the college's level, at the student's level, what kind of a skills need to be imparted, how we need to motivate them, how we need to talk to the faculty members, and how we need to make sure that that employability from 15% go to at least 35% or so. Otherwise, 85% of the youngsters are frustrated today without any jobs. That's not a good thing. And we have heard that in the last 18 months itself, number of colleges have closed down because of the demand going down also. There are various issues associated with that. Then coming back to the project management community, again, I would like to focus, uh, to make it as a general thing, that all the time we need to remember two words. One is balance, other is delight. In fact, irrespective of whether we have 10 years experience or 25 years experience, throughout the career, if we leave our focus and attention from these two words, our life is going to be difficult. In fact, all the time, we need to see what is that we need to do, delight. Many times, many, 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 many places, we talked about customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction. Today, just by using the word satisfaction, companies will not be able to flourish. In fact, we have to globally replace the term satisfaction with the word delight. In fact, whom, whom to delight? Delight the stakeholders. In fact, stakeholder delight, stake, the important stakeholders in any company, irrespective of IT or non-IT, customer is one important stakeholder, investor is second important stakeholder, and third one is the employees. So all the three stakeholders, delight needs to be balanced. In fact, whoever can do that job, of delighting all the three stakeholders at the same time will definitely be highly successful. It is not easy. In fact, whoever can master it, whether that age of the person is 28 or 34, doesn't matter, they are the leaders. In fact, the same thing can be told at a company level, at a customer level, at a project management level, at a project leader level. At every place, whether the company has 300,000 people or 50,000 people or 5,000 people, as far as the project manager is concerned, he or she doesn't need to worry about how many hundreds of customers that company is serving, how many thousands or lakhs of people that company has. It doesn't matter. For that project manager, he or she is managing that one or two or three customers. So for the universe of the project manager should be limited to those customers when it comes to delighting the customers. And then when you talk about 100,000 or 5,000 of the employees, doesn't matter. For a project manager, his or her sphere of influence is that team that he or she manages. Whether it is a 15-member team or 150 people team, as long as those 15, those 150 are delighted, that project manager is doing a fantastic job. So customer is very clear, one or two or three, whatever that person is managing. And then the associates, the employees, or the people who belong to the projects. And then number three is the investor. Because most of the companies today, the big companies, IT companies, or non-IT companies, are public limited companies today. In fact, every day, their stock gets traded. Every minute, thousands of hands change. Every, every, every day, hundreds and crores of rupees are being sold or bought, kind of a thing happening. Every company has hundreds of thousands of investors at this point of time, and there is a real pressure. Real pressure on the companies. Every 60 days, every 60 working days, the CEO of any of the public limited company is put to thousands of questions as part of the analyst calls. The moment a quarterly result is announced, as you have seen, CEOs and CFOs are answerable to anybody and everybody across the globe. All the investors, all the financial analysts, all the technology analysts would be quizzing based on what did you do in this company in the last 60 days, in the last 60 working days. Quarter is three months. Each month has about 20 working days. So three into 20. In 60 working days, what kind of changes that were brought into this company? So people are guessing. People are estimating what, how many customers are added, how many employees were added, how many projects are going red, how many geographies are there, how many new competencies are built in a just matter of 60 working days. So it's becoming an increasingly difficult task to manage companies both are big or small, especially those who are in the public field. And the amount of questions and the amount of answers are increasing. 
and every statement that is made is recorded and next day it is published. On the spot it is actually available, the transcript. So you need to defend all the numbers. So that kind of a number orientation has to percolate to all the levels below. It is just not limited to a CEO or a CFO. After all, what are those numbers that are being talked? It is just an aggregation of all the projects that are happening in that organization. If somebody says, we have made $1 billion in this quarter, that means $1 billion worth of money was given by the customers to this company by doing X number of projects. That's all, full stop. So it is all the money received by doing projects is the cumulative money, cumulative number that a CFO or CEO is actually reporting. So the same thing translated to the project level, project needs to know what is that revenue at my level which I can influence. What is the top line for my project or my projects? What is the bottom line for my project or my projects? When you talk about the employee satisfaction, how, em how my associates are satisfied, how, how delighted are uh, my own employees? So if those questions are percolated, whatever questions that are posed to the CEO and the CFO on a quarterly basis, all such questions, almost all such questions are very relevant to each of the project managers. My, one of my requests is that, please, if you have not gone through some of those quarterly results, please do go through. It is important to have a financial orientation for project managers. In the absence of financial orientation, you will not be respected and you cannot grow in the hierarchy of the company. So you need to know the minimum things of quarter on quarter how your own company is doing and with respect to the competition, how we are moving on various dimensions that, are, that get printed actually. So if you are not in a position to understand and relate to your areas of things, you will not be uh, a very successful project manager. In fact, at your project level, if you are able to say that my project contributed $3 million in the last quarter, and in that I, I could make 37% of the profit, and my project has 157 people, out of which so many people are working in high cost countries, so many people are working in low cost countries, all that kind of a data and another 15 metrics, you must know at any point of time on your fingertips. That is knowing your business. Unfortunately, many of the people do not know what they are doing. Knowing the business, if you just ask these 10 questions, how many project managers can comfortably talk about in numbers? In fact, more and more, if the project managers start talking metrics instead of English, they will be successful. In fact, the first language of the project manager should be language of metrics, and the second language can be English. So when, when any review happens, at, at any point of time, the management is looking for numbers and nothing else. In today's culture, where your project team members may be in any location within India or in many countries, it is not actually mand becoming mandatory at this point of time to transfer people from one location to another location. People can stay where they are and then contribute. Your project managers are actually dealing, all of you, I'm sure, must be dealing people in various places. So how effectively we are able to communicate to the people, how we are able to motivate the people, how we are serving the people, how we are coaching the people is becoming extremely important. In fact, while becoming technically savvy, and as I said, unless you invest at least one hour per day, you will not be able to reach that kind of a comfort saying that I am technically savvy. So at any point of time, Take it as a one hour per day for yourself. You need to give appointment to yourselves. In that, you are doing your self-study. In fact, today, in today's context, nobody gives prizes.